Number seven. Deuteronomy. Yes, sir. Deuteronomy chapter 32 and verse 7. Remember the days of old. It says what? Remember the days of old. America says forget about your slavery. That was a long time ago. All right, forget about it. We, we should all be, but let bygones be bygones. Let's all hold hands in harmony, right? That's what, that's what America says. But what does God say? Consider the years of many generations. Of many generations. That means going all the way back. That means going all the way back to this. All right, keep going. Ask thy father. Ask thy what? Ask thy father. So we're supposed to ask our fathers what? And he will show thee thy elders, and they will tell thee when the Most High divided the nations. He divided the nations. We're supposed to talk to our fathers. We're supposed to inquire. Give me to obey Nate, all right? All these things that happened to us, we're supposed to know this. You're supposed to teach your children about this. Right. And Florida right now, in the state of Florida, I think it's the governor, uh, San Santos? The Santos, right? The Satan. The, the Satan, that's right. What he's teaching you right now is he's teaching to take um, the slavery and say that it was beneficial for black people to go into slavery. That's what's being taught in Florida right now. Let me ask you this. What's beneficial about you getting stripped from your heritage? Get stripped from everything you know, your language, your, your religion, everything, your, your land, and take it to a whole nother place and talk somebody else's customs. How do you benefit from that? What, the, what he's saying is what you knew before was garbage, all right? He knows that you have a past. Your past is being the greatest people on this earth. Bro, Read right. this. Job chapter eight and verse eight. My brother, Yo. did they teach you about slavery in school? What? A little bit, what, what did you know about slavery? What, how long was that course? Was it two days? How long was that course about slavery? Let me ask you that. What, what do you know about your people going to slavery? Give me some, give me some history. And, and you too, since, since you got something. Okay. Um, in school, were you taught about slavery uh, amongst our people, African Americans being enslaved? Yes, because I came, I came out of school in '97, so they Good. were teaching. They, they was, was actually teaching, actually teaching uh, um, us Black history, slavery. Right, history. right. Now Absolutely. let me ask this: This your son? Yes, and we come from a prominent, uh, uh, we come from a prominent background. So he is, of course, uh, he knows slavery. His right, right, right. His grandmother was the first. Uh, his great grandmother was the first. Good. Uh, black politician in Hampton. So. Now, now you see how you was taught slavery, and I was too in school for, for the most part. What about you? How much did they teach you in there? What did they teach you? In, did they teach you about what happened? All the atrocities that happened to your people in school? They don't. And, and, and this is the problem. These people are trying to take your history and wipe it away. What they want to do is assimilate with what they do. God says keep the Sabbath day holy. But they want you to believe that the Sabbath is on Sunday. God says don't celebrate Christmas, Thanksgiving, New Year's, uh, St. Patrick's Day, Mother's Day, Father's Day, birthdays. God said don't celebrate it. But your enemies, your enemies tell you to celebrate it. We can tell it against God. Read that. Job 8 and 8. Job chapter 8 and verse 8. Listen to what the prophet says. For inquire, I pray thee, of the former age. He says inquire about the former age, about the times past. All right? It's not about letting it go. We're supposed to see what happened to us. Because if we know what happened to us, we can know how, how to conduct ourselves and go into the future. All right? Keep going. And prepare thyself to the search of their fathers. The search of your fathers. And the problem is, a lot of us don't even know who our fathers are. Let's think about that. A lot of us grow up in the homes with, with, with no father. Right. With no guidance on who you are. Right. All right? Because we know the and this is no shot to the woman, but the woman's supposed to be more emotional. She's gonna she's gonna cater to the child's emotions and, and things of that nation. When he's feeling bad, she's gonna coddle him, tell him everything's gonna be all right. The father's gonna tell you the truth. All right? The way I deal with my son, I hold little I hold little away from him. I put a little bit of, of water in there and that wine just to, you know, soften up. But for the most part, I tell them straight on how this, how this world is. All right? Just like the Father does. Is that it? Yes, sir. Give me uh, Deuteronomy 28. I'm going to show you how we got this in this predicament. Because if I ask you this, for our nation of people, the so-called blacks, do you feel like we're at the top of society? Are we equal with everybody? Or are we at the bottom as a nation? Yeah, at, the bottom. at the bottom. Good. Give me... Give me Deuteronomy, I'm sorry, hold that, Deuteronomy 20, 20, um, 14, 14, Deuteronomy 14 and 2, all right? What y'all just said is biblical, we're going to prove it, okay? But that's not how we're supposed to stay, all right? Deuteronomy chapter 14 and verse 2, 
for thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. God said that the nation of Israel, you so-called blacks, are a holy people, meaning separate. That's why he said he divided the nations. We're separate from them. Go ahead. And the Lord has chosen thee to be a peculiar people unto himself. Now, the word peculiar means to be strange. Set up, it means to be strange or odd or different. We are supposed to be different from every other nation. We're not supposed to be doing the same things they do. For example, if you look around right now, all the brothers in purple were wearing something called fringes at the bottom of our shirts. These are the laws that separate us from every other nation. Right. Was that it? Yes, Finish that up. Above all the nations that are upon the earth. It says we're supposed to be what? That are above all nations that are upon the earth. This is the Bible. The same Bible your Christian pastor has. He said you are above all nations. Nations is plural. There's no such thing as we're all the same. There's no such thing as one nation under God and all this stuff. We're different. That's what God says. Why are we listening to what man says? You're a greater people than what you think. I hate seeing my people in this messed up situation. The young man just said right before school his cousin died, right? We're the people that suffer like this, and it's normal. The other day we was in the neighborhood, lady was strung up her mind screaming, carrying on. She was drugged up, right? Our people walked right past her like nothing was wrong. Because it's normal to them. But that's not normal in everybody else's communities. Why do we suffer that? We're going to get that answer right now. Go to Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy 28, verse 1. And we're going to show you why our people are in the state that they're in right now. Remember, God said we're supposed to be above everybody, right? But you just said, my sister, that we're, we're at the bottom. You said it too, right? Let's go. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 1. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day. So what God is saying to the Israelites in the wilderness, he's saying, if you keep my commandments, what's going to happen? That the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations. There go that word again, above all nations. God said if we were to keep his commandments, we are going to be above all nations. Not equal to, okay? But here's the flip side. Because like the brother brought out earlier, if you're a parent you have children, if they do good, you reward them, you pat them on the back, good job, right? Mm -hmm. But if they don't do what you say, what has to happen? Punishment. Punishment, consequence, right? Let's see what God does to his children. Because remember, God said that we're his sons. Not everybody else, we're his firstborn. Let's get the consequences. Verse 15, but it shall come to pass, if thou will not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe, to do, all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day. That's the flip side. If we don't do what God says, if we don't do what our father says, what happens? That all these curses. All these what? All these curses. Curses. Are curses a good thing or a bad thing? Bad thing. Let's go. Shall come upon thee and overtake thee. They said we're going to be overtaken by these curses. Let me show you a curse right now to let you know right now that you are the children of Israel. And up. nobody else can fit this, all right? Go right to verse 68. Bring it out. 68. Verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. God said he's going to take us and put us back into Egypt. Remember, in Egypt, we served in slavery. Now, give me um Judah 5 and 11, all right? That's right. And, and, and in Egypt, we serve slavery. We, we wasn't equal with everybody. Just like today, we're not equal with all nations. We serve a, specific, a specific purpose, all right? Judas, chapter 5 and verse 11. Therefore, the king of Egypt rose up against them. He said he rose up against us. Anytime somebody rises up against you, that's not a good thing, all right? That means they have some type of hatred, some type of art against you. Go ahead. And dealt subtly with them and brought them low. Brought them what? And brought them low. That means we was low. We wasn't equal with the Egyptians. All right? Keep going. And laboring with brick in brick and made them slaves. Made them what? And made them slaves. We was mortar with, with brick and mortar. We built their cities. We were slaves to them. That's, right. that's, that's what we served in Egypt. Remember that. Is that it? Yes, sir. All right. So go back to Deuteronomy 28. So remember the mindset. In Egypt, we were slaves, right? Let's go back to Deuteronomy 2. Uh, give me uh, Exodus 20 and verse 2. All right. So remember, he said we're going to go back into Egypt. Right now, we're going to get to the definition of Egypt. Okay. Exodus chapter 20, verse 2. All right. Make sure y'all are paying attention, man. We're out for y'all. All right. We are here where our people are at because God is only for his people.
Christ came for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. That's, right, That's who you are. That's, That's not everybody. All right. Exodus chapter 20 and verse 2. I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Remember, he took us out of Egypt. Let's go. Out of the house of bondage. Egypt means bondage because why? We were slaves. That's right. Let's go back to Deuteronomy 28, 68. All right, let's go. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. Remember, he's going to take us back into Egypt, meaning slavery again. With ships. With what? With ships. Okay, so this time we're going to slavery. He said we're going to go into slavery on ships. Ships. What nation of people went into slavery on ships? What nation of people went to slavery on ships? Were taken into slavery. Who? Black people. Who? Black there you go. That's your people. That's us. We went into slavery on ships. But that's not it though. Keep going. By the way wherever I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. Meaning you're not going to see your homeland again. Go ahead. And there, there, once we are taken off the slave ships, there, ye shall be sold. You're going to be sold unto your enemies. Unto your who? Unto your enemies. God says we have enemies. God says we have enemies. Who were we sold to? Who were we sold to? Who are we sold to? Keep going. For bond men and bond women, and no man shall buy you. So we're going to be slaves to these people. The same way we were slaves in Egypt, we're slaves today in America. This is spiritual Egypt right here, all right? Same thing. God is calling us back to be who we are. He's waking us up to come back to keeping his laws. That's the only way we got this situation. We tried everything else. We tried assimilating. Every time we assimilate, we end up at the bottom. Right. Every time somebody, one of us gets gunned down, somebody else, another nation, gets a law out of it. Right. How does one of our people get oppressed and we march for it and then the homosexuals get a law? Or the Chinese gets a law? Right. Or the Japanese get reparations? The, yeah. the trainers get a law. That doesn't make sense. Right. We're the ones that's messed up. Yeah. We're the ones that's getting shot down. Right. We got the worst education. Right. We live in communities where we have no grocery stores nearby. Right. We have to go to a, a, a corner store for our, our first groceries. Right. Right. Oh, so-called fresh groceries, right? Why do we live like that? Because we broke the laws of God. We got to come back to who we are. What is the nation? Nation is men leading by example. Nation is family. Roll on.